So you're using DWM, right? And you're probably switching between different layouts. You know, you might be using tiling most of the time. You know, you're watching a YouTube video or something and you switch to monocle layout or, you know, for some reason, something's just not working in tiling and you switch a window to floating, right? So how do these kind of just layouts work, right? So you've probably been in the config.h and, you know, let's go down and, oh, here's where the layouts are, right? Here's tiling, here's floating, here's monocle. And it's all stored in this array. And this array is of type layout. Okay, so what's the type layout? So let's go on to the left here and the dwm.c. And here's the layout struct. So first is the string, uh, you know, character pointer for the symbol. And, you know, going back, we can we can see that. Here's the little symbol that shows up in dwm in your little status bar when it's tiling, when it's floating, monocle, right? You're probably familiar with this if you're a, a you know, a consistent user of DWM. And then uh, there was this function pointer for the arrange function. So based off the name, right, you can tell it's how the layout is supposed to arrange the windows. And uh, it takes a parameter of a pointer to a monitor, right? So uh, let's look back down at these uh, hotkeys, right? And so, um, you know, people generally know the, the, the default key bindings, right? So I would press uh, the mod key uh, T to set it to tiling, you know, mod key F to floating, mod key M to monocle, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, mod key space to, you know, uh, toggle the layout, right? So how does that work? So let's see, the function it's calling is set layout, right? And then it's uh, passing this parameter. So let's, let's look at set layout. Set layout, okay, found it. And I have uh, marked it up here. So I put at the top here uh, some variables that this function uses. It uses cell LT. So, um, you know, it might be hard to kind of read this, uh, read, read the, what the variable means, but it means selected layout, right? Selected LT. LT stands for layout. So here's LT, which is the layout array. Uh, yep, and that's... Uh, found elsewhere um, and Selmon is selected monitor uh, so LT is actually a uh, member of Selmon um, we can actually go and find Selmon right, oops. so Selmon right is a monitor and let's see a definition of the monitor struct uh, so it has some layout symbols um, you know dimensions of the monitor uh, your tags and your selected layout, right? And then it has uh, two layouts here, right? Uh, so anyway, I uh, can I just go back to set layout. Cool. So let's see how set layout works. So first is this kind of if statement here, this if statement and the, the statement after. So what this, this uh, you know, these two lines, what it does is basically it detects conditions when you should be toggling between tiling and floating. And this line uh, XORs with a um, with a, a one bit, right? And that will actually uh, change between tiling and floating. Because if we go to the right here, uh, to this, um, to the layouts array, right? Uh, oh, sorry, um, no, to the, uh, cell LT, right? If, if we go to, well, this is, so we saw before that the cell LT, right, is an array with two elements in it, right? And if you just XOR with a one bit, that's going to swap between, um, between what those two are, right? Uh, it, it's going to swap that, uh, you know, rightmost bit. So if, so for example, back to this layouts, right? Uh, tiling would be zero, uh, floating would be one, monocle would be three. So, uh, so if you were, or, or sorry, monocle would be two. Sorry, I'm blanking. But uh, if you were in tiling layout, right? That would be zero and you XORed a bit, then 
the layout would become one, which would be floating. And if you XOR it again, it would become zero. So it's positioning between tile and null. Monocle, on the other hand, the bit is in the second position, right? So if you tiled it, uh, if you, um, sorry, not tiled, if you um, toggled it, right, the, that f uh, first bit, it would become three, which doesn't exist currently. So these two lines are not meant to be used with the monocle uh, layout. And based on these conditions, it's not never going to be. So first, uh, if the argument uh, doesn't exist, or if the argument is a null pointer, right, or has the value of zero, it interprets that as uh, it wants to swap. Um, it wants to you know toggle the layout between tiling and floating. Also, if the uh, current layout, which is some on you know. Um, the selected monitor, then its layout, its current layout, is not the same as the layout being passed in, then it toggles it. Um, so, then if, then it, it continues on. So, if uh, it's not a null pointer, and the argument isn't zero, right, so it's not tiling, uh, the argument isn't passing in the the um, tile layout. It then sets the uh, the current layout right um, to that layout, and then uh, this next line here, the string copy, um, it's replacing the selector monitor's uh, layout symbol with the layout symbol that's being passed in. So that's how I, and then that eventually obviously gets printed up in your status bar. And then this next part, uh, sell mon, uh, sell, if we go to sell, sell is a client. And in DWM, the client, uh, let's see if we can just find the client structure. Um, oh, well, here, it, it just says each child of a root window is called a client, except windows which set the override or redirect flag, blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of just think of clients as the windows themselves. That's not really uh, technically true because windows is, is a structure that Xlib provides. But, you know, in terms of um, using DWM, most things you actually physically see on your screen that you would consider a window when you're manipulating them, uh, that would be what a client is. And then, uh, so basically if if there are clients currently. So if there's no windows, then then skips this. But if, and then, then just draws the bar, as you can see. So if there's no clients, it draws the bar. But if there are clients, it calls this arrange function, which is not the same as the function pointer arrange function that we uh, saw earlier that's inside the layout structure. This arrange function is actually something else. Uh, however, the function pointer arrange function actually does get called somewhere within the call stack of a range, which I'll just show here. Um, let's look for the range function. Here we go. So this like this showed high, show high. There's this restack function. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Um, let's see if I can find where it actually gets called. Um, Ah, here, over here. You can you can see the range function gets called there and there. So I'm not going to cover that for now. It'll be in a future episode maybe. Uh, but you can see that eventually the range function gets called, right? And uh, so what does that range function look like? So uh, going back here, the range function is called tile for the you know tiling layout. Uh, no f function pointer is passed in for the floating layout. And monocle is passed in for the monocle layout. So let's find the tile function. You know, I'm just going to next through my searches. And so you can see here, uh, there's the tile function. It takes in the monitor pointer, um, like the function pointer and the structure specifies. You can see there's a client C, and it, you know, it goes through and figures out how to place things according to their uh, order on the stack. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting, so uh, we can find the same thing for monocle, right?
and a similar thing. We're not going to go over it at this point. I'll uh, probably put a video in the future, specifically going with the tiling layout, because that's probably the layout that most people spend most of their time in. And, uh, you know, we can really deep dive into that. And hopefully from that, you can understand how to create your own. But hopefully this gives you a good start to um, try to figure out uh, if you're going to make your own layout function, uh, where it should go and how it's supposed to be called. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we'll cover a little more and you'll learn a little more about your window manager. So thank you for watching.